A reading from all three of our texts. First from Ezekiel. I will feed them, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. From 1 Peter. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed, for you were like straying sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of our souls. And our gospel from St. John. I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock and one shepherd. Thus far the gospel of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It seems to be the fad nowadays that if you're not preaching on the coronavirus, then you're not really preaching at all. At least that's how it seems to me. That if you're not preaching on the coronavirus, then you're just not doing your job. You're not being a good shepherd. If you just preach the text... Well, and you don't, and, and the text doesn't somehow tie in to COVID-19. Well, then you're just not preparing your people, and uh, and uh, your people are one step closer to being in danger. Our text has nothing to do with that. What if I told you, in fact? that there are worse things than the coronavirus. I know, it's it's quite a shock. I hope you're, you're okay. There are worse things than the coronavirus. And even the kooks on the corner over here tell us that there are worse things. I just saw them the other day telling us how much God hates us and loves us and how much America is wicked and that coronavirus is because we're sinners and that's why it's come to us. Of course, that's all insanity and nonsense, but it's interesting because when I go to talk to them, and they tell me that COVID-19 is the, uh, the curse on America for being wicked, I, I say to them, I, I admit that I am a sinner. Now what? Now what do I do? Because all, the, only, the only lesson that you have to tell me is to repent. But you don't tell me what repentance, what follows repentance. You don't tell me what it means to be a sheep outside of the flock. And that's what we are when we sin. We literally are taking ourselves away from the flock as we sin. And so, yes, coronavirus is bad. Everyone knows this. And hopefully this will be the last sermon that I even mention it. But the worst things out there have jowls, sharp teeth, and are looking, lurking to devour you. Satan. Satan is there like a wolf, oftentimes in sheep's clothing but still moving from bush to bush like on the prairie. 
And the sheep, whose only hope is to, is to have numbers, your only hope as a sheep is to be the middle sheep in the herd. That's your best chance. So then if we put it in reverse, the further away you are from the flock, the more vulnerable you are. Well, in our Old Testament text here, God says, and it literally says, the Lord God, Yahweh, He says this, There they, sh they shall lie down, they, and we're going to get to the they, they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on the rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will, but I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. God the Father says to His people Israel through Ezekiel, He say He names them and says, "You, O Israel, you, the Jews." are my sheep. I will lead you to the promised land. I who have led you to the promised land will lead you continuously to graze on good pastures by ravines where water flows and that you can drink. And I will be your shepherd. Therefore, the one in the middle is no longer the, safe, it's the safest. There we are all, they are all equally safe as long as God is the shepherd. But the more that we decide that we are our own gods or we are our own sheep or that we can do it on our own, well, there are legs of sheep in the grocery store for a reason. Satan has this way of bringing us out of the fold. But the way that he does it is very rarely snarling rabidly and coming after snatching a hoof and dragging one out like you might see on the Discovery Channel or something like that. But rather, it's almost fairy tale like it's almost breadcrumbs like Hansel and Gretel it's almost like breadcrumbs temptation after temptation after temptation after temptation and we gobble them up like sheep who are grazing instead of on good pasture we're grazing on the morsels of self indulgence which is sin Sin is self-indulgence. Every time you sin, you confess that you are God and you are the only one that matters. Every sin is in an attempt to dethrone God. When Adam and Eve fell, they fell because they desired to dethrone God. What did the serpent say? You will not surely die. God just doesn't want you to eat eat of the fruit because then you'll be like him knowing both good and evil and that wasn't such a bad deal unfortunately death followed and we're nothing like God and so the wolf to even to Israel would set those morsels and they would follow gobbling them up and there and not enough blood could be shed on the altar in the temple to be the sufficient sacrifice for all of the sheep for the Jews there was the temple and the blood would be let from sheep and from sheep to oxen to pigeon to whatever was being sold and slaughtered there and the blood was poured onto the people literally poured onto them sprinkled onto them. This blood covers your sin. And the Israelites would be glad and rejoice 
And they would do it over again. Why? Because they sin over again. Gentiles, on the other hand, were in their own flock. A flock full of goats who were not the chosen people of God. And yet, we go to our gospel text and hear the words, those sweet, sweet words of Christ. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father who spoke in, is in Ezekiel, just as the Father knows me and I know my Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. In other words, because the Father gave authority to the Son and the Son knows the, of the authority that is given by the Father, this is what He's going to do with the authority. He's going to let His blood be shed upon them, upon us, and upon our children. Why? So that we would no longer be two flocks, but one. There would not be continuous sacrifice, there would be single sacrifice, and ever-flowing merits from that single sacrifice. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and this is what I will do on account of the Father. I will die. I will lay down my life for the sheep. And also, there are others. There are other sheep that are not of this fold, Israel. I must bring them also. Christ is talking to you. He's talking to every baptized Christian. They were not of this fold, but I will make them of this fold. And I will make them of this fold by blood and by water, by mark and by uh, by mark and by murder. I will make them part of my flock. I will suffer in my body. As it says, because Christ suffered for you, leaving an example, he committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. He was reviled but did not revile. He suffered but did not threaten and continued to entrusting himself to the one who judges justly, that is God the Father once again. He bore our sins in His body on the tree. He who knew no sin became sin for us and died on our account. That we who are sin would not die but live in righteousness. And by His wounds, you are healed. And so we go back to this point. There are other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. Then there's a comma. And then they will listen to my voice. And we there will be one flock and one shepherd. And we call this the Christian church. One flock, one, one flock, one shepherd. No Greek, nor, nor Jew, no male, nor female, but one body. As we heard, heard earl, earlier, as the cup of wine is filled with many grapes and bread is filled with countless grains, so we who are many are but one body. And when we remain in one body and come to, come to repentance and we see how Christ calls us, not merely by His voice, but also by His very own veins. He calls us by the water and blood from His side. He calls us in baptism. And we have no choice but to listen to that call. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the sheep in those baptismal waters 
lay down. In that font run great ravines. On this altar is great green pastures. Not imaginary, but created solely out of the sacrifice and resurrection of Christ given to us so that we would hear His voice and know that it's Christ calling because He who baptized us, He is faithful and just and He will forgive our sins and has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. He brings us to those still waters. He restored our soul. And into hell He went to, and pointed to us and said to all the company of hell, These are Mine. You shall not snatch them from my hands. The victory is mine. I am the good shepherd. And any good shepherd knows this is the first rule of being a shepherd. The shepherd must be worn ragged and bitten. Because if he is not, he is not protecting his sheep. If the shepherd is not haggard and tired, if the shepherd is not wounded, he is not protecting the sheep. That's another way that you can tell false preachers from actual preachers. If you turn on the television and you have a preacher come out and he gives his message and then he goes back and never visits, never t talks to anyone. Uh, he's just a celebrity pastor, Stephen Furtick and Charlotte, of course. Um, then he's not a shepherd. He's a motivational shyster. But as it is, a true shepherd of his flock will be haggard, tired, and wounded. And I speak not of myself, but of Christ, who on the cross, after being beaten, was so, but was raised again, giving us hope that what has happened to the shepherd shall not happen to us, for he is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. And thanks be to God that we are she. Amen. Please rise as we confess the one true faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in our Lord, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty, most merciful God and Father, we implore you to turn the hearts of all who have forsaken the faith once delivered to your church, especially those who have wandered from it and are in doubt 
through the corruption of Your truth, mercifully visit and restore them that in gladness of heart they may take pleasure in Your Word as sheep do a shepherd and be made wise to salvation through Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, You have commanded us to pray that You would send forth laborers into Your harvest of Your infinite...